On this video, we're going to be looking at income elasticity of demand. I'm assuming that you already know about uh, price elasticity of demand. So the definition of price elasticity of demand was the responsiveness of demand to a change in price. The definition of income elasticity of demand simply crosses out the word price and puts in the word income. And just like with price elasticity of demand, if we get a high number, then that means it's elastic. And if we get a low number, it means it's inelastic. So there's our formula, percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in income. Now with price elasticity of demand, the result is almost always negative. So we can effectively ignore the minus sign. Basically as price goes up, quantity demanded goes down. With income elasticity of demand, the sign is actually quite important. There are some goods called inferior goods where as we get richer, we actually buy less of those goods. Uh, for example, uh, we might buy cheap meats um, if we're quite poor, but as we get richer, we buy uh, more expensive meats. And so we reduce our consumption of cheap meats. Similarly, um, at the moment, probably you can't afford a car. In a few years time, you will be able to afford a car. So at the moment, you might be traveling by bus. So as you get richer, you might use less bus travel. So that would make uh, that good an inferior good. So if the result is negative, then that means the good is inferior by definition. That isn't the case for most goods. With most goods, most normal goods, if we get richer, we buy more of those goods. So if we get a result that's positive, then that makes the good normal. And for some goods, not only is it positive, but it's highly positive. If we get a result that's more than one, that means that our spending on that particular item has increased more than proportionally to our increase in income. So that would be not just normal, it would be a superior good or a luxury good. So to summarize, if we get a result less than zero, a negative result, that makes a good inferior. If we get a result greater than naught, that makes it normal. And if it's greater than one, then that makes it not just normal, but also superior. So a little example. In the land of cheese land, let's imagine that the average incomes of people there rose from $20,000 to $22,000. And at the same time, sales of Wensleydale cheese rose from 5,000 tonnes to 5,300 tonnes. So there's our formula for income elasticity of demand, the change in quantity demanded divided by the change in income. Well, the change in quantity demanded from 5,000 tonnes to 5,300 tonnes is a 6% rise. The change in the average income from $20,000 to $22,000 is a 10% change. So our income has gone up by, sit by 10%, but our quantity demanded has only gone up by 6%. So that makes it a normal good because the answer is 0 0.6. It's positive, that makes it normal, but it's not more than one, so it doesn't make it normal and superior. So now we're going to work to some real life examples. Um, we're going to be looking at what happened during the recession between 2007 and 2009. Why go all the way back there? Well, you can see there that there was a big decrease in income uh, in 2020, but that was due to COVID. And in economics, remember, we always look at caterus paribus, other things remaining equal. Uh, and during COVID times, things were not equal. All sorts of weird things were happening. We had lockdowns, we had uh, flights being stopped, we had people not being allowed to work, uh, all sorts of things like that. So other things were definitely not equal. Now, if we go back to the recession between 2007 and 2009, it is on the spec uh, on theme two, paper two, um, then not a lot else was happening. So if we see a change in demand, it's probably due to that recession. So in 2007, the average income per head in the UK was roughly $44,500. And in 2009, it had gone down to $41.7,000. So that is a change in income of minus 6.29%. 
Now, if we look at uh, the number of new car registrations, well, in 2007, there were 2.4 million new car registrations, but by 2009, that had gone down to 1.95 million registrations. That's a fall of 18.75%. So again, we can calculate the income elasticity of demand. So we've got a percentage change in quantity demanded of minus 18.75 and a percentage change in income of minus 6.29. So if we divide that 18.75 by 6.29, we get a result of 2.98. Now, because that's a positive result, because they're both moving in the same direction, that makes it normal. But because it's more than one, that makes it superior as well. Now from that same website, we can get the number of commercial vehicle registrations. So in 2007, it was 398,000, but by 2009, it had gone down to 228,000. So again, that's a, a decrease in quantity demanded of 42.7%. That's a huge decrease. And that makes it, uh, an income elasticity of demand of 6.79. So again, commercial vehicles are normal and superior, greater than naught and also greater than one. And we get uh, a result where the income elasticity of demand is more income elastic than with new cars. Now in exams, look carefully to see whether the question is evaluative or not. If it's worth eight or more marks in an exam, it will be evaluative. Examiners think really carefully on the words that they want to put on the questions. Um, and students, because they're working under stress conditions, frequently ignore that. And they'll, ask, they'll answer an evaluative question as if, as if it was straight analysis. So this one, for example, asks whether beef and beef burgers are likely to be normal goods or inferior goods. Beef and beef burgers. So they are not the same as each other. Um, so, for example, beef could be your cheap minced beef. Um, so that could well be an inferior good. As we get richer, uh, we might buy other types, other products within the beef range, and we might reduce our consumption of uh, minced beef. So other types of beef, for example, stewing beef may well be normal. And the expensive cuts of beef, your steaks, your, um, your Chateaubriand steaks are likely to be not just normal, but superior. What about burgers? Well, there's different types of burgers. You could buy your burgers from places like McDonald's, or you could buy your burgers from slightly more upmarket burger joints. For example, TGI Fridays. Now in this question that does come from the uh, recession um, at the beginning of uh, the 2010s, it does suggest that fast food restaurants actually benefited from the recession as consumers made savings by switching from eating at expensive restaurants to cheaper burger bars. So that would suggest that eating at a fast food restaurant is actually inferior. So you do need to look at uh, perhaps subdivisions within the market or different types of products, beef and beef burgers. You could uh, get marks, you get those evaluative marks by um, by giving a bit of subtlety to your answer. Um, and that's pretty much it on income elasticity of demand.